In this video, let us talk about functions. So, what are functions? Well, they provide a method or procedure in a neat and convenient way to segment code into meaningful blocks. And these blocks can perform the required tasks whenever they are called. So, what if someone does not use their functions in their code? Well, life would be pretty harsh for both the coder and the subsequent people who try to understand the code. Without functions, code can have negligible reusability and readability. So let's jump to it and see how Python deals with them. A function is defined using the keyword def which stands for define. It may or may not have arguments with it. Then the function block definition follows and may end with a return statement. Again, it may or may not have any values to return. C++ or Java programmers may notice that there isn't any return type declaration in the function header. Indeed, Python does not require any explicit return type declaration. Here is an example. This function replicates the absolute value of a number. It takes one argument x and returns it after getting its absolute value. So there are some basic points to ponder. Well, arguments can be of any data type. It could be lists, list of lists, dictionary, object, string, etc. Same goes for the return type. Also, Python allows us to return multiple return values unlike some other conventional languages. We will see that in the next slides. Lastly, there is no need to explicitly convert or mention any data type. Now, here is an example of a function that takes Python list as an argument. Specifically, it calculates the number of duplicates present in the array passed. It keeps a count by updating the hash function, that is the python dictionary count. It then returns the dict count. Note that the retrieving count table is also a dictionary since the value returned is a dictionary. Similarly, any kind of data type may be passed and returned through a function. I am sure you all must be familiar with the concept of global and local scope. A variable initiated inside a function has a local scope associated with it, while anything that is declared outside has a global scope. If a global and local variable names are the same, then the local variable hides the global one. Like in the left example, the output of the code snippet is 10, not 15, since inside the function, the global A isn't visible implicitly. For consistency, global variables should be declared by the keyword global if access to them is needed within a function. In the right example, we specifically specify the global keyword before doing any manipulations with A. This makes sure that we are actually updating the value of the global A. Now let us look at features of a function. It allows one to return multiple values from a function. In the example above, a string is taken as an input and we convert it to lower and upper case strings. Now, we wish to get both the values, so how do we do that? Simple. We just return both of them by taking a leap of faith and Python can handle the rest. Return low, comma up returns both the computed strings to the calling function. And do we get both the values? Again, simple. Since we are returning two values, we can keep two variables to retrieve it. Here, we could have also had just one variable for retrieving the return values instead of two. In that case, the variable accepts the data as a Python tuple. And then, it can be handled like the way tuples are handled. Another concept is inner functions, that is, defining functions inside other functions. This is a very powerful concept which can be utilized in a very efficient way, especially while dealing with a big project with many modules. This demo example here shows the outlining structure of the inner functions. There are several reasons why we have this feature in Python. It enables encapsulation. In other words, the inner functions and the data associated with it can be shielded from other parts of the code. Also, in large projects it can be particularly helpful.